Hi, and welcome to Sunday Segway, coming to you straight out of the UK, and boy, what a show we have for you tonight. Let's get things started. Tonight's contest will be a triple threat match. Introducing first, coming to you live from Newport, Wales, weighing 161 pounds, the technical and sound engineer, Sugar, the Gallon Sugar, Shoot! Next up, we have a man, Bristol born and bred, with countless hours of ring experience, Weighing in at 175 pounds, our wrestling wrestler, the human highlight reel, E. Two J. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, the man of the hour, too sweet to be sour, the no Twitter fan coming to you straight out of Bristol, England, weighing in at 168 pounds, your host, Kenny Killer! Okay everyone, welcome to the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast. It is Sunday, it is episode 8, I am the man of the hour, too sweet to be sour, the one man, no Twitter fan. Kinney Killer. And you know I'm always kicking it with the girl them sugar shugs. Yo. And don't you ever forget that I always roll with my man, my human highlight reel himself, Mr. E2J. Hey, yo. What's up? <laughs> and today, guys, we have a very, very special guest. One of our biggest supporters from across the pond. She's from the Angry Marks podcast. The one and only, the wonderful, the talented Sierra. Hello. How are you doing, Sierra? Is it, is, it, is it a little bit too early for you? Mm, no, not really. I really need to be up at this time. <laughs> you you, know. have, you, you have, cereal, have you had your cereal yet? I had my tea. But that's what wakes me up. Tea with some milk in it, and I'm good to go. Oh, my God. Well, luckily for us, it's, it's 4 o'clock over here, so, you know, all we've got to do is wait for our dinner after this, and that's about it. So, um, My dinner's gone. I ate mine dinner's already. Gone. Yep. I couldn't wait. Really, really <laughs> fast. All right, well, before we get into this, I want to do what I normally do. Um, you guys can follow us at Twitter. It's um, at Sunday Segway. Segway spelled S-E-G-U-E. Uh, you can look on our blog. That's uh, sundaysegway.blogspot.co.uk. And you could listen to all of our old episodes on YouTube, Podomatic, and you can download the Double Twist Pair and download um, our episodes on that. Uh, email us at sundaysegway at gmail.com. We ain't got no deadly dirt sheet this week because we've got too much to talk about. Um, so we're going to go straight into Raw. Uh, segment one. Um, actually, before I get into Raw, I'm not going to let Sierra off the, off the hook. What we normally do is we, when we have our guests on the show... We normally ask them, they have to do, to do their best Fandango impression. Uh, they also have to tell us what, who their favorite current wrestler is and who their favorite wrestler is of all time. So, without further ado, Sierra, if you're ready, can we have your best Fandango impression, please? Oh, dear Jesus. <laughs> Fandango? That's all he's getting from me. <laughs> All right, Shugs. Shugs, the verdict. The verdict. What do you um, think? No comment. I'm going to take the fifth on that one. <laughs> See? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, don't worry. You, you, I still think it's better than Lydia and Garcia, though. So, you know, there's that. Uh, anything's better than her. Oh, God. Good. Okay, well, here we go. Raw segment one. Uh, Chris Jericho, Fandango, dance off. <laughs> oh, God. I'm going to go to Sierra with this one. Summer Ray comes out looking stiff again. Um, Sierra, mm-hmm. what do you think of Summer Ray? 
You know what? It's been like a debate over there at Angry Marks. Like it's def- it's funny as hell. Like they don't ever want to talk women's wrestling, but they'll debate about if she's stiff enough as a dancer. Um, I don't know. It's like they have her in this role for some reason, but on NXT she's really good. Her character is like really catty, and I kind of like it. But then when she comes out there, it's like. Da-da. And she's like, oh, my God, I forgot a move. Oh, my God, like, I just so almost tripped over my heel. Like, she's so scared. And it's like, why did they put her with a equally bad dancer oh. instead of him having with a professional? <laughs> we were well, kind of fooled. <laughs> yeah, well, what they're saying is that the professional that does it with her, she's actually a student. So when she's, when she's um, you know, at college, um, they get Summer Rae to do it, and then when she's not at college, she'll come in and do it. But, I mean, the girl struggles. She struggles to get into a split. So it's just like, you know, come better than that. Um, E2J, um, what, do you, what, what, what did you think of that angle itself? Overall, uh, storyline-wise, I didn't mind it at all, to be honest. Um, it was a dirty heel, heel tactic, do you know what I mean? Uh, play dead move. Um, but but yeah, I I think you need to stick with a professional dancer. I think. Do you think it was mainly because of like taking bumps or like obviously if anything goes down in the ring that that's why they didn't have her. Or not? Obviously, you said she was studying as well. Maybe it's all Wait. part of it. But yeah, I I didn't mind I didn't mind it. I just don't I don't know if it was if it was best for her to have that angle as the opener. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, I I didn't mind it to be honest. I honestly didn't mind it that much. It it wasn't great, but it weren't. They weren't bad. I just feel a bit like mixed on it. Yeah, I mean, um, Shugs, is is Jericho's role now just to like get people over? Do you reckon that's his? You know, doing during this last run, do you reckon that's what 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 his role is right now? Um, yeah, but I because he's uh, always going away and touring with Fozzy, I don't think he's going to be around long enough to have any type of sustained like title run or some type of top level feud. You know, he had the one with CM Punk. Yeah. And people look forward to it, but then it didn't come off like as as well as people wanted it to. So I think it's a good use. And he we've seen him fight uh, right back, and then he was fighting Jack Swagger as well. So he's mm-hmm. being used to have good matches with people they want to look good on TV. So I think it's a good use of a good wrestler just to have him, you know, pull or drag good matches out of these people who are struggling. Yeah, um, Sierra. Do you- do you reckon um, there's any longevity longevity with Summer Rae, I mean, in the long run, regardless whether she's with Fandango or not? Hmm. It's, it's, that's kind of a hard question, especially when it comes to Divas, when they're bringing in so many and getting rid of so many so quickly. You know, they yeah. just cut two girls. <laughs> you know, it's so crazy. But I say it would be some longevity, especially if they go about the split between her and Fandango, right? Mm. And they... If they want to establish her as a heel, they have to do it in a certain manner of where it doesn't come off as something we've already seen. It's original. But I don't know if she, how would you say, it'd be a longevity for her because who knows? They push her one day and then the next day they don't push her. Wait, did you say they cut two girls? Who did they cut? Mm-hmm. Um, They just cut Audrey Marie and... Um, no. Yes, they just cut her uh, and Anya, the six foot one Russian chick. That never made it to TV. To, that never made it to TV. Mm-mm, she only worked two house shows. <laughs> only worked two house shows, and you get cut. Like you must either be really bad, or you just, or they have no use for you. And she was actually not a bad looking girl. And they cut them both. They cut uh, Percy Watson, Derek Bateman. Um, who else did they cut? It was like seven people. They cut all together. Sakamoto. Uh, <laughs> Bryce Pierce as well, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, Riley Pierce. And um, da, 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 da. I know there was somebody else because I was just like, wait, they still work there. But, <laughs> yeah, they cut a lot of people this past couple of days. And apparently more is supposed to come because they're trying Shugs. to filter in the Diva Search girls. Sure, your man Riley got cut, bro. I mean, I don't even worry about these NXT people, you know. As long as they don't cut Bray Wyatt, I don't care. <laughs> the rest of NXT can just do whatever they want. All right, now that cut, NXT... Yeah, as long now as they don't cut NXT... Wyatt, he is the boss. He should be running yeah. Raw. <laughs> All right. <laughs> He'll probably be on there soon. 
you'll probably be on there soon. Um, let's go into segment two anyway. Ryback versus um, Zack Ryder, who looks like he's kind of going through a transition at the moment. What transition that is, I really don't know. You know, all they did was take away, take away the VO5 and that's, you know, and, and, and that's it. His hair's flat and he, he looks like he's a heel now. But um, um, Sierra, what, what was the point of this match? Was there any point? Um, I guess to have the annual, hey, Zack Ryder still works here match. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I call him anymore. And it's, you know, we had this debate about him over on Angry Marks about, you know, do people really care? And I'm like, okay, it's six months. Zack Ryder is going to be the guy waiting in the ring for some big meathead to pummel him. And look, <laughs> he's yeah. getting beat up by Ryback and whoever every week. It's it's sad. It's not even like, like he's collecting a big paycheck, is it? Like, no, but it's like, you mean there's other people in the back you couldn't get to have this match with Zack Ryder <laughs> and his hair? Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> We had this debate last week about, you know, Pete, that they put in, like, random random jobbers. Like, I mean, well, they put in Wade Barrett last week to get his ass handed to him. He's the IC champ. But Shooks, um, Shooks has an ongoing, you know, beef with Ryback, as people out there know. Shooks, has, Ryback, has Ryback's wrestling improved at all? Um, well, I suppose it's hard to say from a match with Zack Ryder how well it's improved. I thought he didn't... <laughs> He didn't look too bad when he fought against Daniel Bryant or when he fought against um, Chris Jericho because they're good wrestlers. But I just, I'm not sure with this right back. They've tried to turn him heel, but he, I don't think he comes across of a heel. He, he's, he's getting to annoy me a bit like Sheamus does. You know, I just mm -hmm. think he's a, a dick rather than a heel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? He's not really doing anything heelish, you know. He's walking off. They're trying to get him to do old school heel um, tactics but you just like uh, you know just get it done with yeah he can't but even he, do the basics properly but he talks like this in his promos I guess that is a heel because I am the right back and it's like <laughs> right, and right I'm back, like right back rules and when he does his promos, I mean, the one he did backstage was really good because it was so old school when he was explaining why the hell he's exactly pissed off because none of us knew. And then now they just keep letting him talk even more like this, like he's a robot. And it reminds me of Adam Bomb. <laughs> and, oh. when, and when you oh, remind me yeah. of Adam Bomb, I don't want to deal with you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, ECJ, I know when you heard Adam Bomb's name, you just popped right there, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you step into the ring with Adam Bomb, the creation of devastation, and you may not make it to WrestleMania. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, ECJ, how long will Ryder have to, like, ride um, this out? Because he, obviously he's not, you know, he's not getting his fair share. You know, we've talked about whether he'll be future in Devon or not, but he is a good worker, isn't he? He's he's solid in ring. You can't you can't knock the guy in ring. I mean he's just he's <clears throat> he's just drawn the short straw, aren't he? Really, uh, with creative. Um, this is the thing. Like I wrote notes about this because I actually wanted to see what uh, matches on Raw had like build up to him. And obviously this was just a squash match. Uh, yeah. It's pretty much just just for the fans to see Ryback in action. Obviously we knew Ryback was going to be getting in, involved somewhere or another on the show, but. He comes out and it's a squash match. It's just so you can, it's basically see right back in action. No build to it whatsoever. I feel sorry for Ryder because he's good in ring. And I mean, when he was a bit more popular, he was pulling stuff out in ring. He was, now it's just like he doesn't even get the chance to show how good he is in the ring. He's just that guy to get squashed. Now there's no build or anything. There, there wasn't anything to this. So what's going on? Why was this match even booked? Like, I know it's sports entertainment, but. It's still real to me. This match is going on for a reason. Who booked it and, and why? That's that's what I'm asking. It's I think Ryback's just going to get shuff, uh, Ryder's going to get shuffled until a better jobber or a younger jobber or a fresher jobber comes along. I mean, at the moment it's it's him and uh, who is it? who's at the moment? It's him and uh, Heath Slater are the, the main main jobbers, the two top jobbers. But that's only <laughs> that's only the two 
till uh, two fresher jobbers come along. So, yeah. That's even a bad thing itself, That the fact that you can say that they're the two top jobbers, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, all right, we'll go on to segment three, uh, which was Tons of Funk, which obviously features Sweet Tea and um, King Hippo out of Mike, Mike Tyson Punch-Out, um, Brothers Clay versus the primetime players. Millions of dollars! Shugs, please, what has happened to the primetime players, man? Never mind what has happened to the primetime <laughs> players. Where is Pancake Patterson? They call me Pancake because I flatten fools. That's what I do. That's what I do. I flatten fools. That is what I want to know. <laughs> is he still out flattening fools? I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, mate, I don't know. I'm glad to see on TV, but I can remember um, talking, like, months ago about... Are they going to get the push? Are they going to get the titles off um, uh, Team Hell No? And now they're just nowhere, you know? That's all I want to I, see I don't well. even know when the last time Hell No actually defended the titles in a title, in a title match. Was it WrestleMania? Uh, yeah, I think so, but don't quote me on that. Because, you know, um, I don't know. I think the part time players have got better. Even um, Darren Young's better than he used to be. And um, Titus O'Neil is like really good. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, I just don't know. I just, um, I think something needs to be done again with the tag team division. But it looks like they're just gonna go to the Shields, and then who knows what'll happen then? No book yeah. it. No, no build. No build on this match either. Even though I was happy they got the they got the win. No build. Like, why were they having this match? Exactly. Um, Sierra, like, is there anyone who could actually rejuvenate the tag division? Hmm. Um. How would you say they they really did a good job of rejuvenating it for a while? Cause you had so many fresh teams, and now you're witnessing so many random teams being thrown together, which we all hated for the longest time. And then teams that were together are being split apart. I mean, you got Justin Gabriel and Tyson Kidd. Tyson Kidd's injured. We don't see Justin Gabriel, and they don't seem like they want to give him a new partner. Um. Evan Bourne was out for the longest time, so Cove Kingston had to be singles guy. And then you got uh, Zach Ryder and Santino, and Santino was injured, but I'm like, Zach Ryder could have found a partner. Somebody, mm-hmm. like, they're, they're, they had so many guys there. You know, years ago, they used to do this whole thing where they have so many fucking jobbers that they're like, you know, let's just team these guys because we have nothing else for you to do. But now they're at the state of where it's like, they only went three or four teams. They got the Usos, who we hardly see. Got the primetime players, who have been dwindling since Abraham Washington's been fired. I mean, oh, seriously, okay. that I mean, his firing just really just cut them off at the balls. No pun intended, but he that really <laughs> cut them off at the balls. They haven't had millions of dollars since. Um, tons of funk. I mean. Okay, they're a comedy gimmick, but eventually this whole somebody's calling my mama, that's going to get old. Because the girls are more over. <laughs> the yeah, nip yeah. So something's wrong there. It's just like they don't know what they want to do. They want to have so many single stars. They want to have so many tag teams. And the Shield looks like they're just going to dominate everything. Well, uh, um, E2J, <laughs> they mentioned about this new movie <laughs> that Brodus plays in. <laughs> it's called No One Lives. Are you going to watch it? And are you surprised that they just told you what the plot is? No one lives, fam. Uh, I'll pass on that one, I think. <laughs> Shugs, Shugs, how are they going to tell you what the, what the plot is in the title? No one lives. Uh, because no one watches it. That's what it should be called. Because no one cares. You know, maybe it'll, maybe they'll sell it. It'll be like the TV movie of the day. Somebody will watch in the afternoon. While, you know, and while Channel 5 movies. Exactly. <laughs> and that'll be it. Nobody's oh. watching that thing. It should be no one watches. Like, exactly. I mean, who watches WWE films anymore? <laughs> it's like anymore, who, anymore. Who yeah. Does? <laughs> who does? Like, I'm. I, I'm not gonna lie. I want to see Dead Man Down just because Colin Farrell's in it. He's a G. He's a bit of a G. Um, and um, Terrence Howard. Yeah, you've got to give him props. But at some point, I want to see that. But apart from that, they yeah uh, yeah twelve rounds. Come on now. Twelve rounds with Randy Orton in. I ain't seen that. I ain't seen that. You don't want to. (laughs) 
Kinney, you can have it. I've got, a, I've got a, uh, no, DVD still from the video shop. Didn't go back, but you can have it. <laughs> oh my god listen we'll do swapsies i'll give you the hardcore holly um, autobiography that you can read and then i'll get the no evil yeah i don't know if that's a if that's a worthy swap i might have to give you something else as well <laughs> all right first. man you owe me anyway you owe me bro <laughs> yeah I do, I do i do <laughs> um all right well we'll go to segment four uh the world title annou- announcement um shugs uh, what did you think of the segment um well i suppose they had to do something because we needed some explaining but did we really need um, Teddy Long? Why is he on Raw? What is he doing on Raw? Why couldn't... Vicky Guerrero is the general manager. Why didn't she come out? I know it was a SmackDown problem, but I don't know. I like, I do like Teddy, but I just think it was... Nobody knew what was going on. It seemed like mm-hmm. nobody knew what was going on, really. And then the announcement was... I think he just made it up on the spot, and now they have to go with it, you know? I don't think Teddy even knew what he was doing, and that's the first match he thought of. Because he couldn't say tag team match, so he just said, I quit match, player. <laughs> the tag team match, player. Um, I'm just going to go on a quick rant. Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Quickly. Um, WWE, right? Please stop telling the universe to vote, because you're trying to take me for some fool. You're trying to take me for some idiot, like you're actually doing this whole thing properly like you ain't you don't give a shit what what the what the fans think the universe think because we damn well know that voting is a work that voting is a work because you already got your thing planned out so don't try and fool me you bastards all right <laughs> <laughs> um sierra um do you feel that you know they can they can they handle the situation with the world title as well as they could or do you think they could have done it a little bit differently I think they did handle it because it just seems like, you know, like they really didn't know what the hell to do. They're like, so, uh, Teddy, you go out there and say something. I don't know. Just say something, Teddy. Just say something. And he's walking out there and he's just like, um, I quit, match." And it's like, <laughs> and then, I, you know, it just puzzled me. Like, okay, why is Teddy Long here? First of all, you don't work for Vicky Guerrero. So why are you announcing stuff that is doing with SmackDown when that should be Booker T coming out there and announcing or Vicky Guerrero saying, Booker T messaged me and I have no idea how he has my number. <laughs> <laughs> but this is what he said. But instead, we're getting Teddy Long with his weird announcements. And I guess they had to go about this some kind of way to – appease the fans with Dolph Ziggler being hurt, but I think they should have just put a better stipulation. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they could have had uh, a submission match could have been, you know, the, yeah. The, yeah, the way to go. But, um, yeah, why, why I quit? Not, a submission match would have been fine. They both got submission finishers. They've both been using them on each other. They both had a success with them. So why an I quit match? It it doesn't need... I can't see how either of them can benefit from an open match. Yeah. Maybe the submission match is not extreme enough. But, yeah. Anyway. um, Segment five. My man Sandow. You're welcome! Versus um, Kofi Kingston. Uh, E2J. Like, it seems like Kofi's getting, like, a mini push because he seems to have the US title and he's winning now. But, um... Like, E2J, is there any, like, longevity with Kofi? Do you see any, any longevity, longevity with him? Well, you've you got, you got long-term jobber, uh, Zack Ryder, and looks like Heath Slater at the moment. You've got long-term uh, mid-carder, Kofi Kingston. Uh, that's the way I see it. Um, solid in-ring. I just feel, I feel bad that this guy can't really just get to where he should be because... You can't knock him. I liked him a lot more since, obviously, he knocked the crap out of uh, Miz. Just busted him open with that horror. And he was on fire since then. People took notice of that move. People took notice of that. And, obviously, I'm glad he's got the title, but uh, he's losing it to Ambrose. That's why Cesaro dropped it. That's what I think. That's so far. Um, But, yeah, Kofi's going to be there as long as they need a a solid uh, mid-card guy to put people over. Yeah. I, I think like I think that's the sad reality of it. I wish it won. Um, I wish he could do more. I wish he'd be in the top spot. To be honest, like 
I think he'd have good matches, especially like with people like Brian and stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, other than that, Sandow needs to be pushed ASAP. He's good on the mic. They they actually had a build as to why he was coming out there. The guy just told you mm-hmm. straight up. So yeah, I yeah. mean that's what I was gonna go to with Shugs. Like, what? How do you see Sandow's future? Well, we thought he was getting a push before, you know, he um, he had a match with Cena and he was, you know, had that build where he wasn't losing many matches, but then he had this, like, jobbing period, what it seems, but then, you know, you could say he's jobbed twice to Randy Orton in the last week, and the match with Kofi as well, so I just think, you know, that obviously he's going to need something to happen to give him the push, you know, we can like be losing like two matches one day and then just go on a winning spree, but I don't want him to change the character anyway. So mm-hmm. maybe if he has a feud with Cody Rhodes or something like that, and then that could help the both of them, and then yeah. a push from there, really. Um, Sierra, what's your views on these two wrestlers? Kofi Kingston, it's like it's so sad because you know, a few years ago we all thought he was going to get the big push with his feud with Randy Orton, but it's like. How would you say, I don't want to say he's gotten comfortable, but a lot of guys that are stuck in the mid-card, they get so comfortable being in the mid-card that they don't mind being in the mid-card. They don't mind being the guy that gets the belt out of nowhere. Yeah. You know, they just look at it as another paycheck. It was so many guys, you know, I've seen so many shoot interviews where guys have been like, well, I didn't care I was in the mid-card. You, dude, I was getting paid, and I'm like, yeah, but you never – you went never went anywhere. <laughs> you know, it's like you never improved. Did that bother you? But it seems like he's gotten so comfortable now and then plus he's he's got a family, so I guess that helps him more of when he wants to take off and you know, he's not in the top spot of where he demanded to be on the road twenty four seven. But Sandow, you know, they really missed the boat on him. I mean, I think they should have pushed him a long time ago. I think he should have been in a continental champion, not Wade Barrett. Like, yeah. they had so many opportunities, but it's just like they don't know if they want to have him and Cody Rhodes teaming or what. And it's ridiculous. No, yeah, yeah, it is. And I'm sure Shooks would agree with you that he should have he should have the strap. Um, Sierra, was it was it you that, that um said on Angry Marks about um Kofi Kingston having a, a new cub or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, he's the wildcat. That's his gimmick now. He's went from being Jamaican to a wildcat, folks. Isn't that something? I, I mean, uh, wow. Talk about morphing already. Yeah, he's the wildcat. And I was like, oh, yeah, he has a cub now. He's a cat. He has a cub. <laughs> <laughs> Easy um, All right. Well, we'll go on to segment six. Uh, the Mark Henry and Seamus Angle. Shugs, why does Josh Matthews keep getting roughed up, fam? Ah, uh, mate, it's because he's so wet. He's easy. <laughs> he's easy. Like you, obviously, you can't beat Dane Jerry Lawler because he could just like die at any moment. <laughs> um, JBL is not gonna, you know, get job for anyone because he's a former, you know, world champ. And you know, Michael Cole is the the play by play, and they only bully JR, so they're not gonna borrow Michael Cole. So they just get this wet you from out the back and just, you know, he got he got choked by someone and he got thrown through the net by someone else when they have all those pipes, like, banging in the background. And then he just got, you know, the beat down from Mark Henry and just dragged around the ring. If, if man was in prison, you'd know he would be the bitch, right? Exactly. He'd be, he'd be walking behind you holding your... Um, you, you know, what is it? Like on um, Prison Break Series 1 when you have to hold on to tea bags. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. The soap, soap drop, fool. Exactly. <laughs> Don't drop the soap. Um, um, E2J, is the strap match the way to go or would, like, another gimmick match be better for Henry and Sheamus? I don't know. I, I, I like this, this gimmick at the moment because it, it kind of come out of nowhere. I didn't expect it to be a strap match, but... Um... Yeah, uh, to be honest, like, the, the thing I'm, I don't mind this at all, because for me, Henry's over, I'll, I'll watch Mark Henry all day, on the mic he can do it, um, I just think the only thing about this is obviously his opponent, Seamus, now, Seamus in ring, I think is going to be fine, but 
he has a, Seamus hasn't he's, he's one of those guys who hasn't really been built to the best of his ability. He came in as a monster, destroying everyone, and then obviously he had that feud of Triple H and just got like buried pretty much. He's a sissy as a as a champ, lost it. He lost it in the chamber, didn't he? Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. So and and obviously now he's like this this hooligan good guy kind of don't really know. I uh, kind of like obviously what Shug said about like how Ryback's got. Um, other than that, I think it's going to be a good match. I just, yeah, I just think that Sheamus not being uh, a legit badass, because I don't think he's a legit badass. I think, yeah, oh, no. everyone, everyone knows in ring that this guy can go. And so, obviously, he does get rated because this guy, yeah, he's a good wrestler. But I just think he could be more aggressive. He could be he could have that edge to him rather than just coming in. Oh, yeah, laughing, bro kick. Oh, yeah, becoming that, becoming that Cena mold kind of. Wrestler, I think that's what hinders this angle. But other than that, I don't think the the actual uh, stipulation does does any damage at all. I think that adds a bit of interest to it because we haven't seen it in a while. I'm looking forward to it. Put it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, Sierra, uh, I've been reading the, the dirt sheets and it seems like there's rumors going around that Mark Henry and Biggie Langston are gonna work a program for SummerSlam for the like strongest, the the most, who's the strongest. Who's the bi- who's the big baddest? Who's the big baddest blackhead? That's basically what it is. Who's the big <laughs> baddest black guy? Like you, you want to get all, all 20, 2020 with me, huh? It looks like they're gonna go for that. What do you think about that whole? If that angle did come together? So you're basically telling me we're having a booty shaking contest? Because I mean, who's got more <laughs> junk in the trunk? Oh I guess. <laughs> yeah. I'm just yeah. saying. I'm just saying it. I don't, I don't know, I w- part of me would like that, but part of me would not like this. <laughs> if Mark Henry loses, because <laughs> yeah. then I would turn on him as if he still has the red jumpsuit on and he got beat up by the Rubbermaid trash can, I would turn on him that quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, looking like a Power Ranger. So like, oh, you're just, you're still sexual with chocolate. <laughs> You've never advanced. I, I don't, I don't know, like, would that be a good idea to have Mark Henry, who's known as the world's strongest man, and then you got this young up-and-comer who we all still don't realize why he's there. Mm. Would it be a good idea to put them in there together, especially if Mark Henry is not retiring yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah, because if that did happen, then that's Mark Henry's gimmick gone. Pretty yeah, because... Right. If he beats him, it's like, so this Hall of Pain and shit has been wasted of time because you have one guy show up and you're done, yeah. dude. <laughs> yeah, out of there. Um, all right, well, let's go into segment seven, Orton versus Cesaro. Um, E2J, what did you think of the match? Out of nowhere. RKO out of nowhere. Uh, yeah, no, no build again. Um, I thought the match was good, the in-ring wrestling. Um, but yeah... RKO out of nowhere. Um, I can't like this is the thing. I can't really see like where they're going with Orton. Is like is he getting a push or and what's what's happening with Cesaro? I just don't know. It's just just it's just that match again, isn't it? It's just yeah. Maybe talk about this every week. You know, talk about this every week. Um, um, apparently the the writers think that Cesaro is boring, but obviously they've seen Randy Orton, yeah. Because mm-hmm. he's boring. <laughs> that is boring. If you want to see somebody who's boring, have a look at this guy. And he's a, like a 10-time world champ. So, you know, Cesaro is at least as interesting as Randy Orton. So I don't see the difference between the two, really. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to go to Sierra with this next bit because listening to Angry Marks every week, I obviously know that there's been some Cesaro beef. And um, Sierra... Thursday night AMP was sick. I'm not gonna lie, it was a good, good um, mm-hmm. show because the debate was just basically uh, it was Frank, live. It was live. Frank Vaughn, <laughs> right, and Alex Goff. <laughs> they were all going in, and Sierra was just there, like just listening to what was saying. Then she started coming in, and she was going in it's on just Alex like, Goff. Excuse me, oh. excuse me. Can I talk? Can I talk? Can I finish? <laughs> Okay, 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 thank you. I was just uh, like, mm-mm. 
Don't mess with, well, don't mess with Sierra. No, I, it's you know it's a backstory to this whole situation because you know not only was Frank getting feedback from fans when through email and he was sending it to me because I always tell him like don't tell him to send it to me because <laughs> they're not yelling at me. Send it to you because you said this. You know, send it to him. And, you know, I've had this open-door policy with fans, like, if you think us comment I made, you know, tell me on Twitter or whatever, and then say, I want to DM you, and we'll talk about it in DMs or whatever. And which some of them have done that, which is fine. But a lot of fans were like, I don't agree with this, and blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, okay, so I'm going to address this one week. So the week he was going to address it, he was out that week. That was the week I had King J on then when I get on Thursday AMP, Stevie J has his comments to it. And I was like, okay, so Frank is going to go respond to this. Frank wasn't there that week. So he never really got to respond to it. And then just out of nowhere on Facebook last week, you know, Stevie J had posted a video, just a clip of him saying his comments back to Frank and whatever. And Alex Goff goes on there. And mind you, my name is tagged in this post. So when you're tagging in a post on Facebook, you're going to see this, right? Because mm-hmm. you're going to get 15,000 notifications unless you don't read it. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, why are people mentioning my name? Like, what? So I go in there and read it, and they're, like, talking, and they're like, yeah, well, she's splitting hairs. And I was just like, and I just simply said, okay, yeah, I was splitting hairs, but... You know, I agree with both sides, you know, and we all have our opinions. Let's be it. Let's just blah, 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 whatever. Frank's never responded to this. And Alex Gall just goes on this freaking tirade just out of nowhere. And he went from just, you know, kind of tagging Frank's opinion. Mind you, he didn't even know fully what Frank said. He went on a tirade coming against me, coming against my character, and... You know, what I'm supposed to do at Angry Marks and just all this other yakky yakky bullshit. And instead of blowing up on Facebook, <laughs> I just wrote face to Frank and I was like, you need to see this post. Because either I'm going to go off and tell this guy off <laughs> and I'm going to get fired or we need to invite him on. So he was just like, oh, we're going to have him on and whatever. So like Tuesday, I was just like, I was just waiting for that opportunity. <laughs> To just be like, yeah. just shut up, because <laughs> I've had enough. You said yeah, everything you wanted you. to say on Facebook, and then you're still rambling? What? Come on, guy. <laughs> yeah, basically, Alex Goff, yeah, you took it to personal fam. You need to take that back, reel your ear in, yeah, and just listen. It's wrestling. It's, not, it's, just, it's just business. It's not personal. It's, yeah. it's business. It's not personal. It's and then it... It was just like, I was kind of offended by it because, you know, he was just like, kept going at me. And I'm like, I don't even know you. Like, there's people that work on Angry Marks because there's so many of us. There's people that's worked there in the past stuff, even when I was coming in, that I never even interacted with. Because there's just so many of us. There's so many guys. There's There's kids that write on the site, and I've never even fucking heard their voice on the show. Like, you know, and I'm like. Who is who is this kid? And you know, and then they have to explain to me and I'm like, Who? And I still don't know who they are. So him me and him only had like one interaction and that's why I was just like, Okay. <laughs> Never seen this side. That's uh, that's why I stay mean. <laughs> yeah. Well now you, you did what you have to do. It was a good show. Um so yeah, props to you. Um segment eight. Heath Slater versus The Miz. Awesome! I came to the And The Miz is back from filming Marine Free. Yay! Not. Um, <laughs> Shugs, did you miss Miz? Just hope that you miss me a little when I'm gone. Yeah, I hope that you miss me a little when I'm gone. Um, no, not one bit. Uh, <laughs> he just had, yeah, like, they tried to do a little bit of build-up, like The Miz will be back, but it was just no pop. He came out and it was just like crickets, tumbleweed, like no no one cared because on SmackDown they all try and pipe in a bit of crowd nose, but um, on Raw they can't do it and there was just no pop. Nobody even knew he was gone, I don't think. They didn't miss him at all. Yeah, they thought he had a bust up with Maurice. 
She slapped him up and mm. he went missing. I wouldn't mind the bust up with Maurice. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, he's still the Miz is still doing the the, the figure four leg lock. Like Flair's not even about um, Sierra. <sighs> so why 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 is that even still happening? Can you talk about like? You know, seriously, we're going to have to do an angry remarks of most failed attempts to be a face. <laughs> and we're going to do a list. And it's like they tried to do this whole thing with him and Ric Flair to make him even more baby face. And it just, it just didn't work because I don't think it's not because The Miz personally. It's just that, you know, like I said one time, I just don't believe The Miz and Ric Flair could actually have a fucking conversation. I don't believe they actually ever talked. I don't believe they ever said good morning to each other when they're walking into the building. I don't believe that. So for you force feeding me, tell me like Rick Fair is like, oh yeah, take my move, dude, that I've been doing for over forty years, and fuck it up while you're at it. <laughs> no, I don't believe that. And then this week, I pointed out in the chat room, I was like, okay, he's supposed to be a baby face, and we're supposed to really care about him, but he's coming out there with a shirt that says "Haters Keep Hating." That is so heel. Is 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 backward. That's what that is. Yeah. I just don't get what they're doing with this guy. And first of all, I'm supposed to be excited he's fighting Heath Slater. <laughs> yeah. No, you're not. <laughs> exactly. Um, E2J, um, where does The Miz even fit into this whole, you know, thing? Like, because, you know, yeah, he's a former WWE champion, yada, yada, yada. But to be honest, we might as well forget about that. Is he in the same line as your Wade Barrett, your Kofi Kingston, or is he more down the card to, like, your, your you know, your um, Zack Ryders? I don't think he's he's uh, on your Zack Ryder level. Um, but that's only because that's only because he's he's been pushed in the past. He's had that top spot. Zack Ryder's never really had that top spot and never been, like, do you know what I mean, really given that, uh, like, a role with weight to it. As opposed to being like mid card job, or yeah, you're over on the internet, but as being over on the internet and actually getting your character pushed with WWE's plans is is another thing. I think with Miz, like yeah, I didn't even I didn't even miss the guy. Um, a commentary they did mention, oh, Wade Barrett better uh, watch out or whatever it is. But what what's Wade Barrett doing? He wasn't even on rule, so what's he got to watch out for? Um, <laughs> it's just. Yeah, I don't really know what's going on there. Like, I want to see credibility to the titles. I want to see uh, more build on the characters and things like this, but they just don't seem to be doing it right. I don't know what it is. They they definitely need restructuring, and some of the writers need to be shot. <laughs> there you go. E2J said it first, people. Um, right, segment nine, Cena, Hell No versus The Shield. We are The Shield. Um, Should Ambrose gets his... You know, they mentioned that Am- Ambrose, get- Ambrose gets a title shot, you know, US title shot. Is this the right idea? Um, well, it's sort of come out of nowhere, really. You know, we've known they've been in the tag team hunt for ages, and we all thought they were going to actually do the Freebird rules, and that was going to be it. But now they've sort of separated Ambrose. He's been having singles matches. He's been, you know, he's had singles matches against, what, The Undertaker, Kane... Daniel, did he fight Daniel Bryan? Or, or no, and then he, uh, and then Kofi. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where it's going really. How how it's good for the Shield. You know, the tag team matches were good. They were taking out um, Team Hal No, and I just I just don't know how it fits in, where it comes in. You know, but that's probably because the US title doesn't mean anything, or the Intercontinental title doesn't mean anything. So whoever's got it, I think it would be the same. Yeah, uh, I think it's three guys with straps still. I think that's what that's what it's going to be. Well, yeah, well, it might might well be. It might well be. But, um, E2J, what did you think of the match? I thought it was good. Um, I think it could have been longer. Um, but yeah, I uh, I like I like it. I do like Ambrose's finisher is growing on me now. Because, like you said before on the previous podcast, he can do it to anyone. He can pretty much do that move to anyone. So, like Austin used to get the stunner in. I think that move uh, with his character as he progresses in the business, I think he's just going to be getting that move in. I think he could. Ro- I think if they go with him, it looks like they've selected him now. 
They've given him a few matches with top guys. Obviously, he's been put over by Taker. He's been put over by Kane as well. Um, they've said good stuff. Uh, I think, yeah, I think they're going to roll with him. And to be honest, I think, I think, yeah, go with it. At least they're doing one thing right. Believe in the shield. Believe in the shield! Um, Sierra, is, is Ryback Cena match falling flat? Because like there was no reaction at the ending when Ryback came out. Um, I think fans don't really know, especially the younger kids. I always bring this up when angry marks and everybody gets mad at me. I think the younger kids don't really know how to grasp that Ryback is bad guy now. Yeah. And I think the fans, especially the marks in the crowd, they're just like, okay, so what? I think there's still those marks that are like, oh, to go work all over again. And then you got the little kids like, I don't understand why they're not friends anymore. You know, <laughs> it, it just doesn't make any sense, really, because they started off so hot, and now it's just like, oh, yeah, we have a pay-per-view match. Yeah, you want to come out here and stare at me? I think what they when it went wrong is when they had that week of the Shield came out there and attacked Ryback after they attacked yeah. Cena the week before. And it, yeah. that just really just was like, why do we even care? <laughs> like... It, he's still going through the same thing, and I think that's what really just did it right there. Oh God! Well, well, we're gonna go into segment ten, which is Big E versus Jack Swagger. Um, followed by Uncle Zebediah. Um, E2J, how did Big E do in this match? Uh, I don't think he ever does like. Bad. He looked uh, a bit as if I think Swagger was directing it this match because I've seen Swagger saying a couple of things. Um, Biggie looked a bit like this was last minute. Obviously, I think it's it, obviously because Ziggler got that boot in his head. Um, I think they they thrown Biggie in, and it's like obviously the pressure. The pressure definitely is there. The pressure showed a little bit. I didn't think he did that bad. Um, when he when he got up. Swagger for the big ending though it was like Swagger literally was, his feet were touching the floor Biggie had him on his shoulder pretty much <laughs> apart apart from that I don't think I don't think it was that bad um, they should, I don't know why they just didn't keep the triple threat match and throw Biggie in obviously but have it have the winner of that is I don't know I obviously yeah, but that, that means they would they would have, Biggie would have had to gone into a face turn automatically I don't think they want to pull that card yet do they not yeah, but they don't have they don't have to pull that. They like I mean they, they could just they can tease it because obviously like they they teased it before with the whole AJ and Ziggler thing like look this is our time like what what are you staring at us for like do you know what I mean like get out get out of there. So I mean I don't know. I just I think I'm I think I'm I was hoping for something like that more so because I'm just Del Rio's face just ain't doing anything for me. It just ain't doing anything for me. I like Swagger, but then you've got like Ziggler and. Swagger, it kind of can work, but they're both kind of hills, and yeah. you haven't re- you haven't really got uh, anyone as a face this over apart from Ricardo, and you, he ain't getting in the matches, he so he should do though. He should. He be should. A wrestler. He should. But Jeez. yeah, I know, I know, I know. Shugs wants to see him with them Zubas. I know Shugs wants to see him <laughs> out there. Bun Zubas, um, mate. Bun Zubas. <laughs> um, Shugs was protecting both wrestlers in this match the best thing for the angle. Um, I just think it was like a boring match, you know, and I don't think, uh, like Swagger had that, um, push the other day where he like cleared the ring and he was going and beating everyone down with, with the ladder. And then this match has almost pushed him backwards, I would say, than where he was because he was looking strong going into the match. I know like the ladder match has gone out of it, but he was looking strong and obviously Big E doesn't really need to look strong at the moment. Because he's not he's not gonna be wrestling anyone. So I just mm. but then I suppose it's better than seeing Swagger against Del Rio again when they're gonna fight on the pay per view in like a week's time. Yeah. So I just think it was a bit of a like a non event really. Yeah. Okay. Um all right, well we're gonna go on to uh segment eleven, which is uh Natalia versus AJ. Uh Sierra, what did you think of this match? I could have did without it. <laughs> Personally, I 
I just think, like, to be honest, we've been having brawls without the divas, and also we had this reality show. We see them a lot, and I'm sick of it. Like, this is the only reason why we've seen Think about how many months we didn't see any of the divas on Raw. Yep. All of a sudden, we announced this reality show, and we see all of them. And I mean, all of them. Like, ones I didn't even realize still even were there. Like, I did not realize Natalia was still with the great Kali. Even though I watched SmackDown, I still did not realize that she was still there. I thought they got another blonde chick. <laughs> and then I was like, wait, Natalia's on Raw? And, you know, um, a fan in the chat room was like, you know what, somebody needs to really go back and tally. When was the last time Natalia was on Raw? And I was like, you know what, the last time she was on Raw probably had to be 2012 at the most. Yeah. Because we haven't yeah. seen her since. <laughs> no, we haven't. Exactly. And, I mean, her being with great Carly, Carly, um, that Shug said last week, Carly is where he's meant to be right now. He's all good. Stay there. Do what you're doing. Um, Shug, what did you think about the women on commentary? Um, yeah, I just, I don't think it highlighted them very well. You know, it didn't, it didn't come off as saying them too well. Um, I'm sure it was better than Elisa Fox on commentary on Saturday Morning Slam. But, um, I just don't think, I know they're supposed to be pushing the Bellas as, you know, um, heels, but they just come off as just straight up bitches, you know? Yeah. That's yeah. it, you know? They're like not even being heels, just they, these two are bitches and that's it. And I think Caitlyn's trying to come off as, you know, being, you know, she's a bit of a tomboy. She's this and she's that. She likes likes the Simpsons and she got this secret of Myra or whatever. But I don't know. It's not it's not doing it for me. Unless Detective Inspector Carly comes back, it's not working. <laughs> um, E2J, we've seen AJ bust out a Black Widow submission. What did Mod- you reckon? Did she, did, she, yeah. did she execute it right? Yeah, modified octopus stretch. Uh, JBL said it was the Black Widow. Yeah, I I like that at the end. Uh, I mean, she, obviously she's only a small girl, but uh, she ain't gonna be doing no uh, big endings on anyone. So I think that move works. Um, <laughs> yeah. No I think, comment. I think. She, <laughs> <laughs> I think I think she's gonna. Uh, she she. I think she might walk away with the. I, they should give her the strap at some point. So. I think that's gonna be. I think that's gonna be the way she's gonna take it. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Shugs would would want to be in in a Natalia situation, getting the the Black Widow all up on him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Slivering all over him and shit. Anyway, um, segment twelve, Triple H, Block Lesnar, Angle, uh, Shugs. Uh, was this a good ending to the show? Um, no. Um, I just think that. Triple H is just like, I know he's the CEO or whatever, the COO, whatever he is, but it's just like everything he does is just, he always seems to be squashing everyone and burying people. You mm-hmm. can't even do an angle with him without him having to, like, you can't even do a promo with him without him, like, just saying, oh, shut up, fatty, you know? And it's just like, well, that's the best he's got. You know, so it's just like Heyman's got to work with him and he's got to do this angle because he's like the mouthpiece for Lesnar. But then you look, you, you can look at Heyman's face and he's just thinking, this guy's a dick, but he's my boss, so I've just got to go on with it, you know? Yeah, like, like we say every week, you can't do shit about it. You just no, got to just like gotta go. Exactly. Just go with it. Um, Sierra, with the angles um, that's happened in the last two weeks, you know, with... Uh, Brock Lesnar and 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 uh, Heyman go into you know Stamford, Connecticut, and um, then this week you know with the the steel cage thing, do you think um, like you're any more invested in this match at all? Mm, no, because it just feels like we're getting the same thing over and over. Even though they're changing up, it just feels like I'm not really going to care unless Brock Lesnar actually wins. Mm-hmm. Because I mean, how many times are you gonna let Triple H beat you up? It was kind of like it's kind of reminded me of how in from 1998 to like 2000 we had Triple H and The Rock feuding for no mm-hmm. fucking reason. Every SmackDown we had a title match, and The Rock could never win, but at pay per views he would win. And it was like 
I'm so tired of seeing The Rock getting beat up on SmackDown. And that's what it feels like. Like, I'm getting the same thing over and over with Brock Lesnar. He's supposed to be this big threat. But for some reason, you cannot beat up Triple H. And he hardly works. Dude, like, really? Yeah, I know. He spends more time talking, like, trying to pronounce his words than he can like, actually does wrestling. Like, Yeah, maybe he's been coaching Ryback on his promos. And that's oh right. my god I am the game uh... <laughs> um, I just whoa. cut my hair off. it's <laughs> like what oh don't even get me started on the hair because we're gonna if we start on the hair then we're gonna have to start on the piss patch and then you know it will just start going around in circles you'll say my mom and I'll say this and then it's just not gonna end pretty um, one last thing because this is the end of Raw Brock Lester, you need to listen to what Suge said last week don't talk because you sound wet when you're shouting, close the door, close the door. You sound like a, you sound like a little mouse. Don't talk. Shut your mouth. Let Heyman do the talking for you. Right. Um, it's the end of Raw. Now we're going to go to SmackDown in 60 seconds. Roll with it, Shugs. Okay, so SmackDown in 60 seconds. Started off, Miz TV. Orton, Big Show, um, Big Show calls Miz a weasel, best part of the whole segment, um, Swagger comes out, Del Rio comes out, where's Teddy, Teddy doesn't come, second segment, you know it's the Mac Militant, here's Teddy, <laughs> five minutes later, six man tag team match, okay, for later in the show, um, next up, The Shield, um, uh, Reigns and Rollins against the Usos, Usos are getting a mini push, but doesn't last long, the um, Shield, Spear from Reigns. Kofi comes out for the save again. Steel chair to the shield. Um, Miz and Teddy backstage. Sando comes in. Asks Theodore for a match, but um, Teddy mugs him off. Um, tons of funk, primetime players. Uh, tons of funk looking for revenge for the Afro pick to the neck, and they get the win uh, by pinning Darren Young. Uh, next match, Jericho Cesaro. Uh, they know someone in the front row, but we don't get to see who it is. Walter Jericho, Cesaro taps out. Summer Ray tries to distract. Fango attacks from behind, but Jericho uh, beats down uh, Fandango. Next match, Miz versus Sandow. Cody on commentary. Cody does okay, tries to interfere. Miz, figure four, leg lock, and wins. But maybe this is a figure five leg lock because he fucks it up as always. Um, <laughs> Oksana versus Caitlin. Um, why is Oksana still wrestling? Um, I think she took the wrong turn somewhere and just ended up in the <laughs> ring. But um, she's horrible. Um, ADR, like Orson, <laughs> and Sheamus versus Henry, Big Show, and Swagger. The heels get jobber entries. Um, Sheamus White Noise on Big Show, Electric Chair on Swagger, and surprise, surprise, Mark Hill for the win. Fade to black. Yeah, sounds like a interesting sm- <laughs> Um, alright guys, it's the best segment of all, and you know why, because you're about to get stunned with Shook Stunners. Okay, Jabra of the week, <laughs> second week in a row, Zack Ryder. We dissed him at the beginning of the show, he's lost his gel, he's gone back to the long pants, but still it ain't working. He needs a recharge. He needs to go away. And if he could take Jinder Mahal with him and they could go to the rehab clinic and reset their um, gimmicks, that would be great. Move of the week. Um, second week in a row, I'm going to go for Dean Ambrose. We need to find a name for it or know what it's called because mm-hmm. it looks horrible and it's putting people away. And then, once again, my rest of the week, Chris Jericho. He's doing his bit for the company. He's putting people over. He's getting matches out of people who can't wrestle. And he's doing his thing. There you go. You heard it from Shugs. All right, guys. We're going to go into the Extreme Rules predictions. So what we're going to do, we're going to run through the card. Um, we're going to talk a little bit. I'm going to ask um, each, each one of the guys individually um, about uh, the predictions, uh, what they think about the match. And then everyone's at the end is going to say, you know, who they predict is going to win. Shugs, I know, well, I hope you've got a pen and paper so you can write this down. Um, we're going to talk about it next week. I so wish, I think we need to do like the same check 
I, f- you, I can hear you echoing. What's happened to you? You hear me echoing? Yeah, no, no, no. That's better now. All right, oh, cool. So, all, cool. Right, all right, cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> mic check, one, two, three. Uh, yeah, all right. So the pre-show, the Miz versus Cody Rhodes. So I'm going to go to E2J with this one, right? Um, do, you, do you reckon this is going to be a, a, a good match? On pe- cause does it look like a good match on paper at least? Uh, it ain't going to be long, is it? It's a pre-show. It's going to be the figure five, like Shug said. That's what I reckon it's going to be. Like, I want to see... These two would be able to have a good match if they were given time. I don't know how long the match is going to be, but obviously it's pre-show, so I think it's going to be pretty short. I think it's going to be finished with the figure five. Okay, so your prediction is Miz to win. Um, Shugs, what's your prediction? Uh, Miz. Miz, Sierra? Uh, I had to go to Miz, because there's nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm going for the Miz as well. Um, okay, so Sierra, I'm going to come to you with Jericho versus Fandango. Um, we've seen them face off before at WrestleMania, um, mm-hmm. so this is the second match. Who's going? Um, who, do you reckon this is going to be a credible match, better than the first one? Hmm, I would have to say it has to be better because the last one was not so impressive. Um. I would say Jericho really pulls out the stops to actually make this entertaining. We might get some dancing in there. I hope not. But we might get some dancing. Jericho might come out there with his own dancer. Never know. Um, I have to say Fandango for this. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, Sierra, let's go with Fandango. Um, Shugs, who are you going with? You know I can't go against my boy Fandango. I think he's still in the midst of his push, and um, I don't think it'll be a clean win, but I think okay. Fandango will win. Okay, uh, E2J. I have to agree with uh, with the guys because Fandango is hot at the moment. I can't see him losing, and I think it's going to be a dirty win for Fandango. You went for Fandango. Well, I'm going to be different, and I'm going to put Y2J. He's on his way out, you know, going to go on tour. Every time he goes on tour, he loses. This time, I hope he gets a win. So, Y2J for me, this one. Note that down, Shugs. Um, Shugs, kind of come to you with the Kofi Kingston versus Ambrose US title match. Um, Kofi, he, he tends to does wrestle really good against other good wrestlers. So, do you reckon this um, this may be... Maybe one of the matches of the night? Um, yeah, I think so, because even in um, the Shield promo, they did the backstage action you know, that you get on the WWE um, on YouTube, and he said that Kofi Kingston is a good wrestler, and he said about him being a high flyer and stuff like this, but then he went on to diss him. So I think that you know they're going to work hard to make it a good match, these two good wrestlers. And I think like the other wrestlers, like wrestling Kofi, apart from um, Randy Orton, obviously, who doesn't like wrestling him, and I think it'll probably be a decent match. If they get the time to work, I think it'll be good. Okay. Uh, who are you going with? I'm going with Ambrose. Or maybe a Shield DQ and Kofi retains, but I'm going with Ambrose. Okay. Uh, Sierra, who are you going with? As much as I want to go with Ambrose because I really like him, I have to go with Kofi Kingston. Because it seems like somehow Kofi Kingston always retains. Especially when he starts the pay-per-view. It's the luck of the dreads. That's what it is. I, I think the, so. Deal yeah. with this. He wasn't too lucky against Cesaro when they were on the floor. Oh, blood, don't remind me. I went, in, I went in last week, man, on that. Rasta don't like that standard. Um, E2J, who are you going with? Ambrose, I think, I think Cesaro dropped the title to Kofi. For this reason, I think they've given it to Kofi because obviously Ambrose Cesaro weren't going to happen on this pay per view, and obviously Cesaro ain't going to lose to Ambrose. So I think Kofi is. I hope Kofi is uh, going to put Ambrose over. So I'm going for Ambrose on this one. <clears throat> okay, um, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going for Ambrose as well. Uh, E2J, I come back to you. Team Hell No versus the Shield. Um, do you reckon it being a tornado tag match makes it, you know, a lot better for the match rather than just a normal tag match? Uh, yeah, definitely, and uh, and especially for the Shield because obviously Ambrose is, I assume he's going to have his match before this one. Um, I don't know, maybe not actually. I don't know. Forget that. Forget what I was saying. I'll start again. 
Uh, I think it's going to be a good match. I think the tornado tag works, obviously, in the Shield's favour. Um, like they're like a pack of wolves, ain't they? That's that's how they work. Um, I think it's going to be it's going to be a lot better in ring for that. I think Shield are going to go over. I hope they go over as well. Okay, Shield. Um, uh, Shield, who you going yeah, with? Yeah, I'm hoping that it's going to be Shield. I think Hal No have had their um, had their run now. I want to see Ambrose doing some singles work. Um, sorry, Daniel Bryan doing some singles work. So this will be a good way to like break up the tag team. And I want to mm-hmm. see him back in the um, the world title picture. Okay, Sierra, who are you going for? Hmm, I have to say the Shield. Team Hell knows look like they're about to have their uh, issues where they have to call Dr. Shelby again <laughs> for some reason. And, I mean, what better way than just have a feud between them and the Shield over the belts if the Shield has them? Yeah. The baby face can't chase anybody if they don't have any heels. There you go. She ever said it herself. I'm going with uh, the Shield as well. Uh, Shugs, coming to you. Big Show versus Orton. Um, extreme match. Does that really, you know, matter? What, what is I, an Extreme Rules match? What the I hell? do not care, really. But obviously, okay. I have to give my prediction. But mm-hmm. I think it's, I think it's just going to be like, you know, like a street fight or there are no rules. So they'll be able to hit each other with stuff and whatever. So I think that Orton is going to win. Because he's gonna either like RKO him on the steps or mm-hmm. RKO him up on underneath the Titan Tron or hit him with this, hit him with that to put him down. So I think it's gonna be an autumn win. Okay. Um, I say this match is gonna go outside. This match is gonna go to the back, and then it's gonna go outside or in the car park. Someone's getting RKO on the car park. One, two, three. You know, there we ha- there we have it. But um, Sierra, who are you going with? Um, do, do, do. I have to really think about this one. Big Show? Big Show. We have a difference of opinion right there. Um, E2J, who are you going with? Uh, this is the thing. I didn't actually know. I don't know where this is going. I don't know where this is going for either guy. But I've circled Big Show. So, yeah, I'm going Big Show. Ooh, knockout punch. Well, I'm going RKO. I'm going with Randy Orton. Um, Sierra, Mark mm-hmm. Henry versus Sheamus. Strap match. Who wins? Who takes it down? Why can't this be a bra strap match? <laughs> like, seriously, see who fits into it better. Um, I had to go with Seamus because some freaking hell he's going to win. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, you, you probably didn't know that we're big Mark Henry fans up in here. And um, E2J, who are you going with? Uh, i got to give for sh- uh, Mark Henry, obviously. Oh, That's you. what I do! <laughs> oh god Shugs who you going for I think that uh, Mark Henry is going to once again proceed to beat Seamus like he stole something and I think he's <laughs> going to have the win yeah <laughs> I repeat that it's, it, I'm going with Mark Henry you're going to whip my like it was slavery times god damn it exactly. I mean um, seriously a bra strap match think about it just Mark Henry putting it on and be like that's just what I do and be like really Mark <laughs> Oh my god, I would actually be sitting there with some popcorn watching that match laughing real hard. Um <laughs> Shooks, Dario versus Swagger. I quit match. Who's gonna quit? Um Well, I don't know whether they're gonna have shenanigans, but I think there's gotta be some type of interference. What I don't wanna see is um Ziggler turning up. I don't wanna see him on the show. If he's got a concussion I want him at home resting up. And I'm gonna say um Swagger. Swagger, okay. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Ooh. But, um, but maybe Del Rio, because if Swagger wins, they're going to have to book a heel against a heel, because Do- Ziggler is hashtag heel. So yeah. um, maybe I'm changing my mind. I'm going with Del Rio. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. that was a bit abrupt. Jeez. Yeah. Um, <laughs> E2J, who are you going with, bro? See, this is, this is hard again. Uh, uh... I'm, I'm going to go with Swagger then, just because Shug's changed it. Um, I'm going with Swagger. I, I, like, yeah, it's going to be two hills, but you you got to think, like, you've got Ziggler, who's the hill that is over, and then you've got Swagger's the hill that is edgy. Kind of, well, started with the edgy storyline, and now kind of, like, really, who's this? <sighs> Actually, no, I'm changing as well. I'm, <laughs> nah, I'm changing as well, because I think 
I think Biggie might get involved or something, and there could be a feud of Swagger and Biggie. And I think that Del Rio, I think Del Rio is going over. He's going to be, he's going to be going against, going for the title match against uh, Ziggler. Sierra. Hmm. I have to say, Alberto Del Rio quits. He quits. Yes. Oh, jeez. Okay. Um, I'm going. Uh, no, sorry. Carry on. Um, the main reason why I say he quits is because you know. First, I was thinking it was going to be so much shenanigans, like AJ Lee and Big E are getting involved and something like that. Something is going to happen roundabout way where Del Rio quits, but he doesn't really quit, quit. Oh, like, like someone mankind, says, mankind, mankind, mankind against the rock. <laughs> yeah, like you have AJ Lee and Big, uh, Big E come out there and say he quits, and, you know, you have Zeb over in the corner saying he quit, and then the referee thinks he actually quit, but he didn't quit. Yeah, because um, on SmackDown, um, like, uh, who was it? Um, Zeb Coulter, he was the only one who said, I quit. And he said, uh, no mass as well. So maybe they're going to pipe in that for a, mm-hmm. Spani- a Spanish, I quit, and make out like it was Del Rio. No mass, no mass. <laughs> and he'll tap out. I'm I'm going for um, Del Rio only because Swagger obviously in the doghouse and I don't see him I don't see him um, you know being on the pay per view with with or being in a match with Ziggler um, Del Rio will probably you know throw a little piss 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 ant thing backstage so I reckon Del Rio is going to win um, Lesnar versus Triple H uh, Sierra who goes down who goes through Can the cage just win? <laughs> It might like, very well. I mean, can the cage just, just start wheeling its way up back up to the ceiling? <laughs> just say fuck it. <laughs> like none of you are climbing me. <laughs> um, I have to say Triple H because I just don't see what they're gonna do with Lesnar after this. Ooh, okay, Shugs. Um, well, they're paying Lesnar all this money. And they've like re-signed him for another two years, and whether he's building towards the Rock, but he's lost more matches than he's won since he's been back. Mm-hmm. He's only won one match, hasn't he? And he's lost mm-hmm. the rest. Yeah. So if he loses this, he'll be like two one day to Triple H. He's already lost to Cena. So I just don't think he can afford to lose, or I don't think they can afford for him to lose if they're pushing him as this big monster who loses every match. So I think just on that alone that. Lesnar's gonna win. Okay, E2J. Yeah, I'm. Shug said it. I'm going for Lesnar for that very, very reason as well. I don't think he can afford to lose this one. But then you're in a you're in an angle with Triple H, and obviously the way it's going at the moment is like they've they've got the cash to get big guys back in like Lesnar, mm-hmm. and they get these guys in to benefit themselves. So it could very well go in Triple H's favor again, but. Lesnar needs to go over, man. Okay. Um, I agree with you guys, Lesnar. Going over um, for the same reason. Uh, last one, Cena versus the Ryback um, in the last man standing match. Uh, E2J, what's the verdict? Who wins? Oh, man. I, I, I'm going to say Cena, I, but I'll... I'd like to see Ryback pull something out. Even if it was, even if it was a dirty win, I just can't see Cena dropping that strap yet I just can't mm-hmm. see them them giving it to him from Mania and then losing it to Ryback already so I'm gonna Cena's gonna pull it out I mean they got articles online Cena being the most extreme superstar ever he's never lost the extreme rules blah 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 Cena's, Cena's gonna take it uh, Sierra um I had to say Superman <sighs> yeah <laughs> yeah cause I, something is this is how it's gonna go Punch, punch, kick. Ryback is beating him like a, a stepchild, and then Cena out of nowhere does a shoulder block. Shoulder block, shoulder dun, block, dun, shoulder dun, block. Dun 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 dun. dun <laughs> pumps up the sneakers. And he hasn't done that in a while. Pumps up the sneakers, and he is Superman. <laughs> oh, cool. I just, I just have just a feeling. See, yeah, I just want to see Ryback to give him a shell shock on the table. Yeah. That's what I want to see. Um, Shooks. Who are you going with? Um, yeah, I think Cena's going to win. He won at WrestleMania. 
and I think it's too soon for him to drop the title. Mm-hmm. So I think they they're just going to keep keep it on Cena. Okay. Um, I got to agree for the plain and simple fact. Think of a gimmick match apart from that tables match against Sheamus that Cena has actually lost. No I quit match. No last man standing match. He will not let the kids see him say I quit. That or, or, or not get up for the ten count. That no. that shit just ain't happening. So Cena's going through. He's right, that so that's the end. He's that kryptonite right. match. Oh get, yeah. <laughs> Fun you Cena. Just get off my TV, man. <laughs> Jeez. Um. All right, guys. That's the end of the Extreme Rules predictions. I'd like to give this last bit to Sierra. You want to do any mm-hmm. plugs? Um. Sure. Um. If you're looking for me, I'll be on angrymarks.com. I do Tuesday night AMP with myself and Frank Vaughn every Tuesday night at 9. Sometimes 9.30 depends on, you know, when we start things. And I also do Thursday night AMP. I'm just super busy now. That's also at 9, myself and Stevie J, the boss. And I have Angry Marquee Newsfeed. I plug, uh, do everything women's wrestling. I talk about everything that's going on in the indies and um, I got some coming articles about the deals and knockouts because I used to do them weekly too, but it's just stressful trying to be positive <laughs> about them when you don't you. see anything. So the indie girls give me so much positivity and stuff, so I just write about them every week. And um, other than that, just come check out the site. There's so much content there, and then also check out these guys. I really sponsor these guys and their number one cheerleader because you know came and asked me for advice and i was like why are they asking me for advice i'm horrible <laughs> <laughs> oh no it's just because we listen to you every week or uh, yeah we listen to you every week so you know it's got to be done you gotta ask sierra see what she thinks sierra knows best <laughs> um hey. i appreciate yeah. it you know you guys asked me instead of just you know like what do we do? <laughs> <laughs> like you know. I said before, we, we podcast virgins out here, so we got to do... Hey, hey, this is episode eight. No more of that virgins. <laughs> we're dealing with it oh. now. All right, we're, we're, we're hitting third base. We're hitting <laughs> third base. <laughs> um, okay, well, you know, as always, um, please follow us on Twitter at Sunday Segway and email us at sundaysegway at gmail.com. Um, I'd just like to thank, you know, the technical guy himself, Hashtag tech guy. Um, <laughs> the girl never sugar shugs. Yo, <laughs> and, yo. You know, it's it's yeah, a pleasure. It's, it's a pleasure. You know we love doing this, man. Um, i got to thank E2J, the human highlight reel himself. You know, no you problem, know, man. Uh, no problem, man. Um, and i got to give enough thanks to our biggest support across the pond, Sierra. Thank you very much. We appreciate mm-hmm. it so much for coming on. Um, and hopefully, you know, you, this won't be your last appearance. Hopefully you can come on more times, especially for our Beat the Clock trivia. Um, and, um, yeah, I'd just like to end it, as I always do, in the words of Big Papa Pump Scott Steiner. To all my freaks out there, Big Papa Pump should hook up. Holla if you hear me. Peace out, people. Peace out. Later. Ah!